Hi everyone and welcome to our live. I can see loads of you on already, which is fantastic. So leave us a comment in the chat and tell us where you're watching us from in the world. And we'll do some shout outs to all the amazing countries following along with our live. So my name is Lorraine, I run Formula Botanica and you are hopefully watching us because you're registered for our big masterclass, which is going to be huge and it starts on Monday. If you're excited, tell me in the chat because I'm excited. I am super excited because over 37,000 people so far have registered for their ticket. This is the formulation event of the year and you're in it, which is fantastic. And if you're not in it, click on the link with this live and go and sign up and grab your ticket immediately because we are going to have so much fun. First of all, we're going to learn how to make this face cream. I've got a ton of them here next to my desk. It's bright yellow. It's packed with antioxidants. Brooke's got one too. And we're going to have a lot of fun teaching you how to formulate. Um, and today, as part of that, we want to help get you ready. So we're going to be talking about your equipment. But before we do that, I'd just like to introduce Brooke. Brooke, can you tell the audience who you are and what you do? Hi everyone, as Lorraine said, my name is Brooke, I'm Brooke Medhurst, and I'm the formulation tutor here at Formula Botanica. So you might have seen my face in the groups before or in some of the lives that you've seen beforehand, but I am, I work as part of the education team, I work as part of creating the course materials, running our um, fabulous membership sites, and lots of different things to do with making sure that everyone who goes through our courses has a good time and learns everything that they want to learn. Brilliant. Yes, our education team is fabulous. Lots of amazing formulators in there and they helped us create this face cream that you're going to learn how to make next Monday when episode one comes out. So we've got people following along today from Spain, Argentina, US, Ghana, Hong Kong, um, lots in the States, Las Vegas, New Jersey, New York, Milan, Italy, Bristol, UK, Nigeria. Wow. Scotland, Portugal, Mexico, Belgium. Wow. We are global. Malaysia. Fantastic. Big warm welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for joining us. So the way this is going to run is Brooke and I are going to talk you through the type of equipment that you might need when you start formulating. And I just want to put the spoiler alert out there right now. You're not going to have to spend a lot of money. The tools are really easy to get hold of. And actually, you probably have quite a lot in your kitchen already, but we're still going to run you through it. We did a live stream earlier on in the week on Monday when Anna Green, our education manager, and I ran you through the ingredients you'll need in order to make the skin cream that we're going to teach you how to make. And we told you where to find your, sorry, wrong way, shopping list and your workbook. So if you haven't downloaded and printed out your workbook yet, get it printed and then take a selfie of yourself with it and put it on social media and tag us because we love seeing everyone from around the world do their workbook selfies. Um, so yeah, today is all about equipment. You can hear some clanking on my desk in front of me already because I've got beakers here, you can't see them. Um, so one of the questions that we get over and over is what do I need to buy in order to take part in the masterclass to make the skin cream? Now we've already told you which ingredients you need and there are six amazing suppliers who actually have masterclass kits available in five different countries. So if you haven't ordered from them yet, you can go and do that. We also have an Amazon storefront. I can see the team has already put that up on our YouTube channel if you're watching us on YouTube. Um, so, but the next question we always get is, what sort of equipment do I need? Do I need a lot of expensive equipment to get started as a formulator? And there is no one better in our team to run us through this than Brooke. So Brooke, over to you. <laughs> so as Lorraine said, there is not a lot of equipment you need and Part of why I get the reputation of being good at this one is for my little lab in a bag that I've become a bit infamous for. So this is everything I have to formulate. I've got a bit more than this now, but when I started, this bag wasn't as full as this. So this is everything you will need to get started in formulating fit into this tiny little travel wash bag. So... It's not a lot of stuff you're going to need. It's not a lot of expensive stuff. Everything in here came to under a hundred pounds in UK. Most of it has come from Amazon. You can get it from some of its kitchen stores. Some of its, you can get them from suppliers that 
sell ingredients. There's lots of different places you can get these things. But I was should I run you through them all? That... Well, we'll do them. We'll do them one by one in a minute. Okay. But yeah, I just wanted people to see you've got it in a tiny bag. Yep. So it is not a big. It's not a big. It's a plain sized. You could take this on a plane. Sort of size <laughs> bag. A portable but, lab. Interestingly, yeah. I once interviewed one of our graduates and she told me that she had all of her ingredients and her equipment just in a small suitcase. And she was traveling as a makeup artist and she would go around hotel rooms and just set up a little, little mini portable mm -hmm. formulation station. And I should add, the first time I did a live stream like this with Brooke, she brought out her bag and everyone in the team and I sat there and went, this is genius. So then we went and had a lab in a bag made. <laughs> and we are hoping to eventually sell these. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but you will watch me unbox this actually in episode two of your masterclass, which will show you all the tools that you need to get started. So um, let's start with if, if people are following along with the masterclass and they haven't formulated before, do you think we recommend that they uh, should we recommend that they buy anything up front? Not really. No, there's sort of most stuff that you're going to need to formulate this cream in particular. You've probably already got in your kitchen from cooking. I mean, unless you're sort of one person that never cooks and you've never baked a cake in your life, then you might need to buy a couple of things. But for the most part, you can make do with bowls, whisks, spatulas, anything that you have in your kitchen. That's perfectly doable. As you develop and you go forward, we would recommend you have different things rather than using the same stuff you use for cooking food. But as long as you wash it really thoroughly, maybe sterilize it into boiling water, there's absolutely no reason you can't use kitchen utensils just for this masterclass and yeah. as you start your courses if you want to join up at the end of it yeah absolutely we want you to just get started and we don't want you to worry about you know spending loads of money and getting lots of equipment you can always get equipment later but then even when you do it's still not going to be super expensive so don't worry too much about the equipment you'll watch me use various tools and we'll obviously run you through them in more detail in the masterclass itself, but it isn't big, it isn't expensive and it isn't daunting. And I think that's the most important takeaway that I want you to, to get from this live today. Um, so we're gonna run you through three items that you must have or three items that you should aspire to have, shall I say? Because obviously I've just told you, you don't need to buy any equipment. Um, but the first one, well, do you wanna run us through the three, Brooke, and show us what you've got there? can do so first things first i would say that does make it infinitely easier when formulating is glass beakers so these are fantastic they're really really fun this this is a 100 mil beaker this one is a 50 mil beaker and this one is a 25 mil. And I think Lorraine has an even smaller one. There you go. <laughs> I've got a 10 mil here. Very yeah, cute. It's so cute. Everyone needs one. <laughs> yeah. So these are fantastic when formulating because they are the vessel that you're going to be making a product in. So when you're getting started, you're probably not going to be making anything in big batches. So you mm -hmm. would probably, you would make do pretty easily with a 100 mil and a 50 mil. You could make pretty much everything with that up to 100 gram batches you can get bigger ones you can get 250 mil when I started I had a 250 mil and a 50 mil and I did miss the 100 mil so if you're going to get any size get this one yeah but other than that they are really really handy because if you get the boron hardened glass one because they're designed for lab work you can take them from hot to cold and they're not going to shatter so you can put it in your warm water bath, melt your emulsifier, take it out, put it in a cool water bath, and it's not going to go bang and you're going to end up with glass shards everywhere, which is not what yeah. we want. So there you go. Pyrex jugs do the same thing. So if you have one of those in your kitchen, you can use that to formulate in. It's a much bigger jug, depending on the size of jug you have. But these are essentially the lab version of a Pyrex jug. Yeah, and they're really easy to get hold of. I can see someone's already asked in the chat on YouTube what's the best place to get it. Amazon is a great start. We have a, an Amazon storefront where we have a lot of equipment listed. Um, but most, uh, pretty much every country in the world will have a, a scientific glassware supply store somewhere. They're really easy to get hold of, and they're super fun. And the thing I will say the most is that once you start formulating, if you put it in a beaker, all of a sudden you feel like a formulator, <laughs> which is ridiculous. <laughs> but it does really help 
So yeah. yeah. Okay, so that was number That's one. Brilliant. What's number two? So number two is this adorable little mini whisk. So you could, when you're combining your two phases, you're going to need something to stir them together. Now, if you're making a bigger batch, a normal kitchen whisk would work. You might have an egg beater or a small spatula, but these things are very, very nifty. They are really handy and really good for sort of getting in around the edges of the beaker, making sure everything's combined nicely. So, and they're like one ninety nine on Amazon. They are not going to break the bank at all. So definitely worth the investment. Mine has a nice little hook on the edge that you can hang it up with and... No, nope, they're brilliant. Yep. And they're also good fun. And if you, you know, as you're practicing for the masterclass, it's fun to have a little tool. But if you don't buy a mini whisk, again, it isn't the end of the world. You can do a lot just with a spoon um, or a stirrer of some kind. So don't worry too much about it. We're just showing you what's um, what we'll be using. And we'll run you through all of this in episode two of the masterclass in a lot more detail. Um, so don't worry too much about that. And someone says, in my workbook, I can see there's a mini homogenizer. What is it? What can I use instead of it? Don't worry too much about that. I'm going to explain all of it for you in the masterclass and actually show you what it is, how it works, and whether or not you need one. And it it's optional. That's the most important thing. You will watch me make the skin cream with this whisk, not with a homogenizer, which is a, a, a stirring implement. I'm going to use this whisk. And you can do that too. Cool. Okay, number three. Number three, and this one is one that is non-negotiable really when formulating, and this is a scales. Now you want a scales that's going to go down far enough for you to include essential oils. So we've got, right, it's got a fancy green one. Mm-hmm. So you want something that goes down to 0.01 for you to be able to measure out any essential oils, your preservatives, your extracts, anything that's under 1%, you want to be able to measure out nice and easily when it's in smaller amounts. This is a cheap little jewellery scales I bought off of Amazon. It was, I think, eight pounds. So it's nothing that's going to be massively expensive. Really, really easy to use. Portable, fits in nicely in my little bag. Really simple. There's three buttons and that's it. And I did the entirety of the courses with this little thing. So you you will manage to do pretty much everything with this little scales. You can use a kitchen scales when you're doing bigger batches, but because of the small amounts of oils and preservatives you might be adding if you're making, say, 50 grams of a product, you would only need 0.5% essential oil, which is going to be 0.5 grams. And that's going to be really difficult to weigh out in normal scales. So you need a jewellery scales and something that goes down low enough. Yep. Perfect. We're getting some questions in. I'm going to put a few up on the screen. Barbara on YouTube asks, where can I get the scales in the US? Amazon, Barbara. We even have an Amazon US storefront just to help you started where we've archived all of the equipment together. But seriously, this is $10, roughly about. It's so easy to get hold of. Baz Brooks says, you'll be working in small quantities because you're not instantaneously going to be mixing up huge batches. We're not putting you in production. We're just helping you make a few small skin creams. So, um, yeah, go and check it out. And I can see other people are asking as well about different things. So let me just put up a few more questions. Um, Chelsea says, can we use a KitchenAid mixer? Not for this particular formulation. You won't need it. Honestly, all you need is a beaker or a jug and some kind of stirring implement. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. People often think that to make emulsions, you need big fancy equipment. And I will explain what an emulsion is in the masterclass. So don't worry if you don't know, but uh, you don't need lots of expensive equipment. You can start really, really simple. A kitchen aid mixer might be a bit too big for you to start with. And if you haven't got a mini whisk, there's lots of other things you could use. You could use something like a glass rod, which is literally just a straight thing of glass. if I can find mine in my little bag, you can use, I know someone who used cocktails, um, what is it, chopsticks. I've seen someone make an emulsion with chopsticks before. So you just literally need something to stir it with. And I apologize for the <laughs> while I find my glass rod. It's decided to fall all the way to the bottom. Yeah, they like to go. do that. They like to do that, yeah. There we yeah. go. Finally, glass rod. <laughs> so yeah. this thing. You can make an emulsion with this alone as well. These are, again, £8 for a pack of 10 on Amazon. They are really, really inexpensive and easy to get a hold of. This is a mini little spatula. It's the newest addition to my 
equipment kit and it's really really handy because it's the right size to fit into the beakers this was about three pounds in a camping shop so you can be really ingenious with the equipment there is definitely alternatives you can find quite easily yeah something that would you don't need much equipment for it at all so let me just put up a few more questions because they're all flooding in it says if my scale has grams am i good yes your scale needs to measure in grams we don't work <laughs> in imperial units it's going to be all metric but with metric measurements you can also be more precise which is why obviously you also need your scales someone asked what's the name of it i mean these honestly don't have names someone else asked which one should i buy off your amazon page yeah. doesn't matter get a digital scale small diddy one you know it just takes batteries and you'll be fine honestly if you if you need to look up one with smaller amounts you can look up jewelry scales that does tend to come bring up more that has they, that they go lower yeah. so if you're struggling to find one that goes low enough type in jewelry scales yeah Exactly. I just want to put this question up or this comment up from Jasna as well. She says, I still don't have my ingredients. I'm getting discouraged. Well, don't worry. Honestly, I mean, lesson one, episode one drops on Monday. There's going to be nine episodes. You'll have plenty of time to catch up. The whole masterclass is available until May 17th. And we're going to give you the formulation uh, on a formulation sheet to take with you afterwards. And you'll still have the workbook. So even if you don't have it right now and you can't start with this on day one, don't worry. It's all going to be fine. OK, so we've run through um, we've run through three tools that we think you could get there. They're a lot of fun. I mean, obviously, we've talked about beakers. We've talked about whisks. We've talked about scales i mean there's nothing big and scary here right there's nothing expensive about it but we've got one bonus one that we wanted to throw in didn't we brooke <laughs> yep so can you walk us through it so i imagine the next bonus one is going to be your lab notebook this is something that's really really handy and this is going to be you're going to have your own here printed is for the master class we've already given you one printed out with all the details you need but if you want to start making your own formulas you're going to need a notebook so everyone in the team has their own branded ones but yep any notebook you're going to need one of these <laughs> yes so our mantra at formula botanica is if you didn't write it down then it didn't happen so we want you to have a piece of stationery that you just write all of your formulation experiments in and uh, don't you don't need anything fancy. Unfortunately, these aren't for sale yet either, but we're working on it, believe me, because I really want to be able to sell them. Um, as Brooke said, if you've got your workbook, that's going to be the most important thing because you can actually take notes in here as you go along and there are lots of boxes available for you to write in. And I can see a couple of people have asked, I can't find the workbook, you haven't emailed it to me. It is in your study area. So every single email you'll get from us throughout the masterclass will be directing you back to the study area. The first email you got when you signed up had a link to the study area in it. Go and click on it and your workbook is right there. Big red button at the top of the screen. You can't miss it. And then there are also links to the kit suppliers and to your shopping list, which is just there to help get you started. But if you want to buy a full kit, there are obviously six companies that have them in stock and uh, they are selling like hotcakes at the moment. So I would recommend getting in there as soon as you can. Um, wow, lots of questions. Will you be selling lab books? Eventually, yes, but for now, just grab a piece of stationery, just write. Um, someone asks if we're selling the physical workbooks. No, we are not. I, I don't think we could handle that on top of running a masterclass for 40,000, 50,000 people. We're expecting a lot of people to take part. Um, is it okay if you use the workbook digitally if you want? But we think it's more fun if you print a copy out and you can fill it in as you go along. Uh, a couple more people are asking, how do I sign up? Click on the link with this live and come and join us. 37,000 people are already in which is incredible and I just want to say I mean you can see the counter here behind me that's how many students and graduates we currently have at Formula Botanica so 37,000 is a lot <laughs> you can imagine it's a big undertaking for us so uh, let's see we've talked about sort of the the simple tools that we recommend you start to think about buying once you get started and we'll run you through a lot more of this in episode two of your masterclass. So the question I suppose that everyone's going to ask is where can I buy them? Where would you send people, Brooke? Send people for 
to buy the equipment to buy the equipment so i would say the best place to start getting things is amazon it's nice and simple easy to get a hold of easy for most places in the world so that's a good place to start we do have a amazon storefront shop so if anybody can post up the link into the chats of we have a us store and a uk store you can get as i said lots of different places from kitchen shops anything that sells kitchenware you could get a pyrex jug you could get a little egg beater whisk you could get um large spoons something like an ice cream sundae spoon you could use that to stir with if you can't find a mini whisk anything like that so kitchen supply shops are very very good anything that sells things like that camping shops as i said i found this one in a camping shop so there's lots of lots of little places you just need to sort of keep your eye out and start thinking like a formulator where you can figure out actually what can i use that for yeah we want you to be a bit inventive to start with we don't yeah. want you to spend a lot of money we just want you to have fun because you know formulating is fun it is easy and it is empowering and we're on a mission to teach the world to formulate which is why we like to teach these big master classes for free um the other two places you can buy equipment is two of the suppliers actually who have master class kits are also selling equipment they were very quick off the mark um i think it's uh, natural heroes in the netherlands and um and go native in New Zealand. And I'm not sure what their shipping policies are, so I don't know if they'll ship globally, but go and check them out because they've also got, along with the kit of ingredients, they've also got the uh, the equipment available. I saw someone ask um, about the ingredients and if they can replace some of the ones that we're using. Yes, you can, absolutely. In fact, we did a live stream on this on Monday. I'd go and check it out if I were you because Anna and I walk you through every single ingredient we're going to use in the masterclass what it is and where you can find it. So don't worry too much about that. So we've said it a few times already, it's not expensive, um, but nonetheless, I still want to address this point because it comes back a lot in our community. So when you started formulating, Brooke, what sort of investment did you make in terms of equipment? I, as I said, I, everything I did the courses with when I started formulating, so I, um, joined Formula Britannica when I was 14. So I didn't, I was still doing schoolwork. I did not have a lot of capital. And I did this out of my pair things my parents could buy me or out of my pocket money. So this, everything in here came to under a hundred pounds. I bought it over a couple of months as I progressed through the courses and figured out what I needed. But with ingredients as well, you can start really small. You can get things like butters, oils, emulsifiers, none of those are very expensive. Depending on where you get them from, you can get them in sort of quite small quantities, which means you don't need to buy, you know, don't need to buy kilos and kilos of things that you're not going to use. You can buy small amounts just to try them. And a lot of times, even those small amounts will last you quite a long time. So something like vegetal, you would only use five grams for a hundred grams of cream. So a hundred it's not that you can make many, many batches of cream with that. Yeah. And you can get ingenious with things like the shipping costs. You can try and get everything from one place if you can. It's not always possible. So sometimes you might have to buy from a few different places. But most places will sell at least a good amount of what it is that you need. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's not going to break your bank. You don't no. need to buy a massive big homogenizer or anything like a giant whisk one of those kitchen aid mixers you don't need a mixer you don't need any vacuum tools nothing like that well not if you're 15 you're not 15, <laughs> not 15 now no <laughs> i We're am with us for a while now <laughs> i have now yeah i'm 20 now so okay. but you can see the skincare works well it does um, so on that note, I mean, I once had a student go through the Diploma in Organic Skincare Formulation, which is our, our flagship course. And they said to me at the beginning, right, I'm going to buy a really big, expensive homogenizer. I know exactly what I'm going to make. I know exactly what brand I'm going to start. And this is the investment I'm making. And I took that person aside and basically said, please don't buy this right now. You really don't need it. And she said, why? I know exactly what I'm going to make. I said, yeah, but you might change your mind. <laughs> and so she went through the course and actually came at the end of it and said, I'm so glad I didn't invest in all that expensive equipment because you know what, I'm just going to launch a range of facial oils and she didn't need that anymore. So we also don't want you to make any big investments 
in, in equipment, not that you really need to until you start to really scale up production because ultimately it just doesn't cost that much and it's it's not worth you um, buying big things that you might not use in the long run. So that's why we're also running this live today because I know a lot of people get a little bit concerned about how much money they might have to spend. It's all very manageable. And as you saw at the beginning, you know, we've got our lab in a bag inspired by Brooke and her incredible original lab in a bag. And um, I'll be unboxing this whole thing for you in episode two of your masterclass. And it will show you just how simple it is. There are a few extra bits and bobs that you can buy. That's why we have our Amazon storefront. Someone asks how important are the pH strips? Get them if you can. But, you know, don't worry if you can't, because the, the formulation we've provided is fairly straightforward. Um, it's fun to play around with them. So we'll come to that in episode two. Don't worry about it. Um, so how much, I think you said at the beginning, didn't you, that your whole kit came to about 100 pounds, which would be about 150 US dollars. Where did you, you just picked it up from lots of different kitchen supply stores, didn't you? Pretty much, yeah. So a lot of it came from Amazon. A lot of it was stuff that things like this... Um, laser thermometer this is something my dad had for building and i he bought a new one and i nicked the old one <laughs> the glass rods these were from a these particular ones were from amazon but i also bought a set from soap kitchen in the uk which is when i did an order of ingredients these beakers you can buy in you can buy a pack of 10 that comes in 10 different sizes that's about 10 to 15 pound I think but that's for 10 different sizes with that one that you end up having up to 600 milliliters in beakers so I have some really really big beakers and I have to say I have never used them so I wouldn't bother with that if you're gonna just if you're just starting out see if you can get an amount that's just sort of maybe three sizes these three maybe you can get them from any sort of scientific glassware shop or yeah. I think I got a few from the soap kitchen as well. Some suppliers do sell equipment, so it's good to keep an eye out in those places. I have this little pH meter. This is another one I had from Amazon. It's sort of not ideal for cosmetics, but it works for what I needed it to, For and it's cheap enough that yeah. it's not going to break the bank for the first half. Another good alternative is shot glasses. These actually work quite well as mini beakers you might have either these are metal ones or metal ones glass ones that you can wash up and sterilize same ones you would have in the kitchen you can buy them anywhere that would sell glasses anywhere that would sell homeware stuff or you can also buy those cheap little plastic ones yeah you can you can dispose of them i tend to wash them up and sterilize them in between uses and try and get as much use out of them as i can but they are very handy for pH measurements. They're very handy for mixing mm. gums and glycerins and oils and very small amounts. Yeah. That's sort of in place of this little beaker, you can have one of these. So it's all about finding different alternatives that you can use instead. Yeah. Gloves, again, this is something that you're going to want as you get further down the line. You don't really need to worry about it to start with, but it is good yeah. for hygiene. These are available in pretty much any if you have access to anything for the nhs these are available through those channels they're available in building stores amazon lots and lots of places yeah so we're going to run through all of this in more detail obviously in the masterclass, but we just wanted to demystify it a little bit and make sure that you're not too worried about equipment because i know some people were a bit concerned um, I can see Janet on YouTube is posting up all the things that she's bought, which is awesome. <laughs> I'm sure that, wow, you've, you're quite well kitted out already, Janet. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing what you make. I'm looking forward to seeing your cream. And I like this one from Chris on YouTube who says, check out the thrift stores. I think that Definitely. is an awesome piece of advice, Chris. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so uh, there's a couple of other people asking about um, the fact that we're running a group for this masterclass. We do have a big free networking group on Facebook. We've been running it for years and years. It's got 68,000 people in it. It's not mandatory to join it. I mean, you can obviously still take part in the masterclass for, without being in there, but I do recommend coming to check it out because it is a wonderful community and the people in there are really fantastic. And you're going to see a lot of people make this cream and share their top tips as well as we go through the masterclass and teach you how to make this. There you go. 
So we just want you to understand, you know, be inventive, look around your kitchen, think about using your kitchen scales, use your kitchen whisk, use a spoon instead of a glass rod, um, instead of a, a water bath, which you'll watch me use in the lessons, use a pan filled with, um, use a bowl over a pan filled with water. Um, use a bowl rather than a beaker, just wear one of your kitchen aprons. You can see how we've taken care of a lot of the equipment. There are a few other little bits that you might want, um, but we'll run you through all of that in the masterclass. Don't worry about that. You'll be able to get hold of it really easily. So I guess the final question I have before I open it up, so please do put your questions in the chat, um, is if I wanted to formulate professionally in my kitchen, um, can I do that with the equipment that we've been talking about today? I think if you wanted to have a brand, you ideally need to have a separate space to formulate in because of what we call GMP regulations. So you need to ideally have a separate space that you don't prepare food. It's not somewhere that you're going to be interrupted by family, children, pets, anything like that. You want to have somewhere that's separate. Depending on where you are in the world, that can be within your house, no problem at all. You could have a garden office, you could have just like a spare room. But as to get started with when you're learning, the kitchen is absolutely fine. Yeah. As you start wanting to sell stuff, it becomes more something that you need to invest in having a separate space. But for now, do not worry about it. Anywhere that you have a flat surface with access to power and water will be perfectly fine for formulating you can just use your kitchen I've done it at my desk before I've done it at dining room tables literally anywhere flat surface and you want power and mortar but other yep. than that that's all you need <laughs> absolutely and we're going to talk to you more about natural preservation during the masterclass. I will touch on good manufacturing practice we do recommend that you start, you know, wherever you feel comfortable because you're just practicing at that stage. But if you want to become a formulator, as Brooke says, you know, carve out a little space somewhere in your house. Lots of people in our community have done this over the years. I've watched people just use a small corner table in an office. I've watched people build offices in their garden. We've even got a graduate who used to formulate in a 99 square foot trailer that she, um, a mobile home that she drove around the wilderness, you know, it doesn't matter. And as I said, I told the story earlier about one of our graduates who used to actually formulate while she was going um, from hotel to hotel when she was working as a makeup artist. You don't need a lot of space. So don't worry about that. Let's see. Denise asks, will the cream work in a pump top bottle? Yes, Denise. In fact, I have one, but it's down in the film studio. Otherwise, I would show you. So a couple of other people have asked about containers. Where would you recommend people go and look for containers, Brooke? There's lots of different things you can do for containers. So you can, if you have any old skincare that you've used up, you can just wash out the containers and use those. You can, if you want sort of little jars like these, Amazon again is great. Lots of sort of body care shops. I know we've got one called Body Care in the UK that do um, they do travel containers so you can buy in things like Boots. And I'm thinking, I'm not sure what the alternative is in other countries, but places like Boots, they do kits for travel containers. You can use those. As someone said, you can use mason jars. Yep, old jam jars work fine. I have um, those little honey pots that you get in hotels. I've put formulations in there before. So upcycling packaging is really, really easy. Again, any products that you've used that come in sort of jars like this, yeah. wash them out, sterilize them and use that one. Absolutely. It's very easy to find. Yes. Um, it's very easy to find jars and bottles. Just find a container that you like because you're just practicing for this masterclass. You're not going to sell this cream in that container. It's just for your own personal use. So don't worry too much about it, but make sure it is obviously clean and dry. And I will add, I mean, nowadays, refill stores are starting to really mushroom out the ground across the world. And they all just say to you as well, just make sure your containers are clean and dry. And that is their main stipulation. Um, Kathleen asks, are we selling the lab in a bag? Not yet. I really, really, really want us to. <laughs> it is a, a dream of mine that we have a merchandise store. We're working on it, believe me. Um, having students in 182 countries makes the logistics slightly painful, but we're working on it. So don't worry too much about that. Okay. 
Um, someone says, I can't see the ingredients class from Monday that you spoke of. It's on our YouTube channel. If you just go to the Formula Botanica YouTube page, it is uh, probably two videos back. You can see it there. It's also on our Facebook page and it's very easy to find. And we've got this one from Middle Age Mary, who says, will you address possible substitutions? Yes. Episode eight of your masterclass is all about how you can take the cream that we've made and mix it up. And we'll be talking about different oils, different hydrosols, different um, botanical extracts, different emulsifiers, which is the ingredient that binds oil and water together to make this cream. And then also natural preservatives, different ones. So that will be, uh, some of that's already in your workbook and then we want you to start to investigate and get inspiration and see what you want to work with because that's what makes you a formulator. Once you take our recipe and then you create your own, then you're not a recipe follower anymore. You are a formulator. And that's also what we've taught the 16,706 students and graduates who have gone through our courses. Let's see, here's one for you, Brooke. Can we use aloe vera juice instead of water for body butters and lotions yes you can so you can use aloe vera juice or aloe vera hydrosol in place of water i will say in a body butter body butters are normally anhydrous which means they are entirely oil based so you would use butters you would use waxes you would use oils but you wouldn't put anything that contains water in there you would need an emulsifier to be able to do that but anything lotions wise anything that is an emulsion you could use aloe vera juice, no problem at all. It is aloe vera juice is a really lovely ingredient. Try and get a um, cosmetics grade one if you can, because then they're preserved and it's a bit safer that way. But mm. you can definitely use it, no problem at all. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, let's see. This one, this is a good question, and we will address this in the masterclass. But how are you sterilizing? Well, we're not sterilizing we're sanitizing and disinfecting mm -hmm. uh we tend well you tell you tell us <laughs> i personally use um a solution of isopropanol alcohol so i know the sticker is upside down at the moment it's my little own little one that's turned around but it's literally just 70 percent isopropanol alcohol and then 30 percent water i've mixed this up by myself alcohol has been slightly more difficult to get your hands on recently but Usually it is pretty easy to get a hold of. Again, anything like pharmacies you can where you can get rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol is the same thing. That is pre-diluted. So rubbing alcohol, a rubbing alcohol solution, you wouldn't have to dilute it yourself. This one here is ones where we've diluted it ourselves. We've bought 99.99% mm -hmm. pure isopropanol alcohol and diluted it. You can buy rubbing alcohol. You can buy things from pharmacies for sterilizing cuts and wounds things like that is the kind of stuff you want so spray bottles are really handy then you transfer it in there you can just spritz it okay. and leave it and leave it to soak and don't <laughs> sit in the cloud full of alcohol but, i've done that live yeah. as well and then suddenly you're like oh i shouldn't have done that <laughs> leave backwards a bit but yeah so leave it to soak then leave it to evaporate off and it will kill anything nasty that's on your beakers and things you can use boiling water to sterilize them if you haven't got the alcohol but that or you would need anything glass or metal based for you couldn't do that with anything that's plastic no. so this one is the easiest way for all materials because it's not going to degrade any of the materials it's not going to yeah. have any effect on you know wood plastic silicone nothing like that yep Cool. Let me put up a few more questions as they're all coming in and comments. This from Jackie, who says, I'm excited and waiting to get to the class. So um, I, Jacqueline, I'm so excited. In fact, the whole team at Formula Botanica is there'll be at least 30 of us involved with this uh, with this big masterclass. That's why we do it in such a condensed window, because obviously the majority of the team needs to be supporting the students and they're still doing that in the background. But we're doing extra for the coming couple of weeks to teach the world to formulate. So I am incredibly excited that you're here as well. Thank you for joining us. This is a good question. Is the cream vegan? And the answer is yes. Don't worry. Yes, it is. Don't worry. So there is nothing in the ingredients list that we've given you that is non-vegan. So everything in here is perfectly suitable for vegetarians, vegans, and yeah. pretty much anything like that 
Absolutely. We don't tend to use animal derived products yeah. in our formulations. It doesn't quite sit right. I think the, the um, thing that tends to cause the biggest problem is um, beeswax. Yeah. But very easy to replace with candelilla wax or sugar yeah. wax or sunflower wax or marika fruit wax. So, you know, there's a ton of them. So don't worry about that. But yes, it is vegan. Okay, let's run through some of these comments. I'm trying to keep up to date. Someone says, I bought the kit. Natural Heroes, yay. So Natural Heroes is an awesome supplier in the Netherlands and they are stocking all of the ingredients in a small kit as well as the equipment. And we've got six different suppliers who are stocking everything. However, I will say some of them have already run out at least once. Um, the demand is huge. So if you're interested, I would go and get in there now because I can't guarantee that it will all be there in a few days time. Um, we're expecting probably at least another 10 to 15,000 people to join us before we start on Monday. So it is big. Um, so if you want the kit, go and buy it. Otherwise, you can find the ingredients individually as well. And we've got some other suppliers listed on the supplier page who will be able to um, sell those ingredients to you. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is an interesting one. This ties in with what you were just telling us, actually, about the isopropyl alcohol. How long do you leave it on your tools before using the tools? I try and leave it as long as possible, at least until it has completely evaporated from the tools or whatever you've sprayed it on. Depending on what you've sprayed it on, it'll depend on how long that takes. Sometimes, ideally, I tend to leave it about half an hour if I can, douse them in alcohol, leave them while I get all my ingredients out. But you don't have to leave them that long. Just try and make sure that all of the water has gone and evaporated off before you use them. Wow, so many questions coming in. I'm trying to... They're just flooding <laughs> past, aren't they? I know. Um, let's see. There's a couple of people saying that um, like the German supplier is sold out of masterclass kits. You're in luck because the Dutch supplier has not. So you can just go to the one next door and hopefully they will ship to you. Um, but go and go and have a look at the list of suppliers we have. We're trying to expand it. I mean, this is the first year actually that we have that we're working with suppliers and they have actual kits. Um, so we're hoping to have a few more in the future because obviously you guys need the kits in order to be able to formulate along with us. And these suppliers are awesome. So while you're there, go and check out their website as well and see what else they are selling. This one's from Fun Maliao. I'm sorry if I've mispronounced your name. Um, is this formula for all skin types? And well, yes and no. I suppose anyone can use this, but the point is that we're just teaching you how to formulate and you can then make it your own. And in lesson eight of the masterclass, which you can already start to look at in your workbook um, and go and download your workbook in the study area before someone asks me, where do I get it? Sign up for the masterclass go to the study area page, which will be in the first email you get, click on the big red button, and then you have your workbook. And we're going to be talking about how you customize your natural emulsion. So an emulsion is a, a cream blend, and that's what we're going to teach you how to make. And there'll be lots of alternative ingredients that I will show you in the lesson and run you through. So don't worry about that. But in theory, everyone should be able to use this cream, shouldn't they? Theoretically, yeah. The only thing I could think of is if you have a nut allergy, with the almond oil, but you can just replace that with apricot oil, sunflower oil, grapeseed oil, anything that, anything like that, any kind of oil you can get your hands on. But other than that, I, there is nothing in this cream that would pose of an issue to the majority of people. Yeah, exactly. Um, someone else asks, Manaz asks, are both men and women able to use this product? Absolutely. Yeah, it's absolutely. an emulsion. We are teaching you how to make an emulsion. And then we want you to take those skills out into the world and create your own emulsion. So if you then want to layer in more botanical ingredients, or you want to try a different emulsifier, or you want a different fra uh, fragrance or scent to it, you are then starting to learn how to become a formulator and not just following a recipe. And I know many of you have followed recipes online, but we're going to take it one step further for you. So you already start to get the skills of learning how to become a formulator because and I've said it a few times, but I'm going to keep repeating myself. We are on a mission to teach the world to formulate. Um, just tying in with the isopropyl alcohol again, um, Nashipur asks if using I IPA, isopropyl alcohol, will reduce the pH of the product. 
No, because it's not going in the product itself. Yes. It's just going into your beaker. You spray it in and it evaporates very quickly, but it's in contact with the glass or with your tools for long enough in order to sanitize it and disinfect it. So it doesn't actually go into the product itself. I don't think we want to put isopropyl alcohol on our skin. Not really. Clear. So there should be none left in the beaker before you make your product. So if there's a little bit of a puddle, as you can see just there, you want to wait a bit longer before you use your beakers. It's not quite finished sterilizing. Yeah, cool. A user on Facebook, I think in our big group, um, says, can this cream be considered organic? Yes. I mean, we tend to use organic ingredients. We are an organic cosmetic formulation school. So we work with ingredients that can be certified by EcoCert or Cosmos. We go with the European standards, which tend to be fairly high, but they're all pretty much the same around the world. Um, yes, absolutely. And that's very important to us because that's a big part of our ethos. Um, let's see. Uh, Wendy says, since the US supplier is only showing four items out of the seven in the class, does that uh, seven ingredients, I should add, does that mean they're sold out of the others? I don't know, Wendy. I'm sure our partner manager knows, though. So we will find out. And we, we are constantly talking to the uh, suppliers out there. But by all means, reach out to them and say, where do I get the other three? Because they know that then that the demand is there and maybe they can get some extra stock in before we get started. Uh, whew, okay. After finishing the classes, will we be able to create a cream for particular skin concerns, such as hyperpigmentation or acne? Uh, we're going to teach you how to make a skin cream. And then if you want to learn how to formulate and how to tailor it and how to maybe even turn that into a business, then we do offer courses for that, obviously. But this big, big masterclass, as I said, we're expecting 45, 50, 55,000 people to take part, will be all about teaching you the basics of how to make a skin cream and what you do with it after. Well, that's the exciting bit, of course, because at that point you can then go, right, I'm now going to learn how to make a cream for hyperpigmentation or for acne. And we help people research their ingredients. We have a we have awesome courses. I mean, they're award-winning, they're accredited. We have over 16,000 students, obviously. We also have a big membership site um, for formulators, which has big ingredient research libraries in it and formulation libraries that Brooke is in charge of as well. Okay. Rahina says, when are you talking about sunscreen and sunblocks? We are only going to be teaching you, I say only, it's a big undertaking, just this face cream. We're going to be teaching you how to make that. And it's going to be so much fun because we're going to run through it in nine episodes over nine days. And each episode is only 10 minutes long. It's like your own mini Netflix series. And when you log into it, you'll see when you go to the study area, it looks like a Netflix series. And we want it to feel that way because we want you to feel like, oh, I'm going to sit down and watch something really fun and then go back and binge watch all of them whilst it's all still available. Cool. Where can I find the ingredients to use for this masterclass? Um, well, go to the study area, click on the link that says suppliers, and you can go and buy them from there. And there are six suppliers around the world who have a kit, uh, but there are also other suppliers listed on that page who have some, if not all, of the ingredients. Okay, here's one for you, Brooke. Can I use a wooden craft stick to mix my formula in beakers? I've never seen wooden craft sticks, but if you mean sort of the sort of chopsticks and skewer sticks, then yeah, definitely. You want something that's sort of sturdy enough and isn't really going to bend too much. But wooden sticks, perfectly fine. No problem at all, as long as they're sort of kitchen use ones and not like you want them to be clean and purpose for things like kitchen use and things like that. You don't necessarily want anything that's not sterile or anything like that. But yep, yeah, wooden. Ah, oh, lollipop sticks. Yeah, you could. If you're in a pinch, you could use a lollipop stick. Yeah, no problem. Love it. I've never tried it personally, but yeah. Try you it. Give it a go. Yeah. Let's see. We've got um, Marika Janos who says, how could I join the masterclass on May 2nd after I've signed up? Is there a link to click? Yes. In the first email you received from us, there was a link that said, go to your study area. So if you click on that, it will take you straight through to the study area. That is the only page you need. There'll be literally no other pages, but we'll be live on YouTube and Facebook very occasionally in between. But all of your lessons, all of your episode, the workbook, 
the masterclass suppliers link everything is there so go and click on that and you can get started and i just want to answer this one as well because i think this is a brilliant question from Jeannie on YouTube, who says, years ago I was told that emulsifiers will emulsify the oil and moisture on our skin and cause drying out of our skin in the end. Do you believe this holds true? No, I do not. And there are two reasons for that. Firstly, emulsifiers have to be activated and you'll watch me in the masterclass heat it up in order to be able to activate it. My skin is not at 75, 80 degrees Celsius. There are cold process emulsifiers as well, I should add, but no, they don't pull moisture out of the skin. The other thing to note is that emulsifiers are so, emulsions, so that's a cream, are so common in the beauty industry. You see them literally everywhere. Your hand cream, your body lotion, your eye cream, your face creams, your conditioners, they are all emulsions. So it's so, so common. It will not pull moisture and oil out of your skin, I promise you. In fact, it's a really nice way of delivering um, moisture into your skin because an emulsion combines water and oil together and um, yeah, your skin will appreciate you for it definitely. Okay. So many questions. Um, <laughs> this is, oh, I like this one. Woohoo! <laughs> this is exciting. It is. It's super exciting. As I said, 37,000 people have already got their ticket and it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. Okay, here we go. This is a great one for you. Brooke, I've got one mil and two mil spoons. Can I use them to measure a percentage of an ingredient such as 1% of essential oil? We would rather you didn't <laughs> because those spoons are, they're pretty good, you know, when you're cooking, they're pretty good at approximating, but they're not really accurate enough to be measuring in percentages or grams. So we have the same question a lot with measuring essential oils in drops. Again, they can be different sizes. So I have a set of spoons and I do use them for getting things out of packets. I use them for scooping my emulsifier out of the bag, but I will always, always, always use the scales and measure it in grams as well. You do not want to rely on just these spoons. If you can avoid it, please use one of these because they are more accurate. And it's not so bad with things like the, something like the, um, carrier oils if you have a little bit that's not quite right then it's not too much of an issue but as you start getting into things like essential oils preservatives they do need to be specific amounts so that is yeah. something that we cover more in depth in the masterclass. but you do need to be a bit more precise with some of the ingredients yeah which is why you need this yeah so they are they're not expensive as i said this one is a jewelry scales from amazon less than 10 pounds so less than yeah. I suppose it's ten dollars in the US around around about that. Please invest in one if you're going to be using. If you want to be doing formulation, it is definitely definitely worth it. Yep, I completely agree. And you know what? A few years ago, I uh, well, quite a few years ago already, I wrote a blog post which is on the Formula Botanica blog. And if you haven't gone to check it out, please do because we've got over four hundred articles on there, all about formulating. Um, and I took about twenty essential oils from my stash and I measured the weight of one drop of loads of them, and every single one was different. So you can see that measuring in drops is not precise. You know, one drop um, from one particular essential oil was heavier than another one. And then I went back and did it all a second time to see if I'd get the same results the second time around, and it was all different again. So go and I'm sure the team can put that link up in the chat, but it's worth having a look at. If you're still working in drops, please don't because essential oils can sensitize the skin, which is why we want to be very precise to make sure that we meet dermal limits. We'll talk about this in the masterclass. Okay, a few other questions about the ingredients. Is there an alternative to Vegetal? We're using a, an emuls emulsifier in the masterclass called Vegetal or um, Montanoff 68. And uh, we are using that one because it's fairly easy to come by. Um, but in lesson eight, episode eight of your masterclass, um, which comes out, I think, on May 8th or 9th, you will be, um, I'll show you a load of alternatives as well. So if you can't get hold of Vegetal, have a look in your workbook already because it lists them. And you can always buy those and figure out how to follow along with a slightly different formulation. And this one's from Rita. And Rita's awesome. She says, formulation is an addiction. 
Yes, it is. is. A lot of fun. (laughs) Definitely. Okay, let's see. Oh, from Marika, I'll wait for the email to open up the study area. If you have signed up for this masterclass, you have already been sent that email. If you haven't found it, go and check your junk mail or write to us at hello at Formula Botanica and the team will get you started. Patricia says, will all nine episodes be available at the same time? No, we're going to release one every single day for nine days, and then it will still be available for a whole week after. And the last time we ran a masterclass like this, there were so many people who said to me, I've been binge watched all nine of them 10 times. They loved it so much, but we purposefully kept it really short. And when I was writing the scripts, I actually sat there with a timer to make sure I didn't go over 10 minutes because I I know you don't want to sit through a four hour long webinar and they are so common nowadays. You want it nice and short and simple. So that's what we've created for you. Um, Let's see if we, okay, here's one from Lydia. Can I become a formulator after taking an online diploma course? Well, the answer is yes, you can. Um, And it's a lot of fun. And we have that online diploma course. And we will be opening up enrollment for our International Organic Skincare Entrepreneur Program on May 11th. And we will be taking like the people who are really, really serious about this through to become a formulator and to start their own skincare brand. Um, So yes, absolutely, you can. Everyone can formulate. You've probably seen me or heard me say it across social media. Everyone can do this. It is a skill that's been around for a very long time. Humans have been formulating for millennia. And um, we've lost that skill a little bit, actually, because the beauty industry has told us that you have to be a chemist to do this, and you don't. There are many great chemists who make great formulations, but you can make great formulations too. Um, I noticed some most suppliers here have different names for the ingredients. That makes it difficult to source the right ingredients. Do you want to just answer that one, Brooke, while I scroll through all the questions coming in? <laughs> can do. So if you're struggling to find names for the ingredients, we would suggest yeah. you f- go yeah. by something called the Inky name. Now, this is the international nomenclature of um, cosmetic ingredients. And I'm trying to find the page in the workbook. There we go. So on this page here, you will see that under the ingredients, we have a different name that is done by Inky. So I-N-C-I. If you put this name into Google, you are more likely to find the ingredient and find the exact same one that is what you're after. So for sweet orange essential oil, for example, it's citrus or orantium dulcis peel oil. This is the Latin botanical name. Sometimes they are, they're usually the Latin botanical names for the ingredients. And this is essentially the universal language of cosmetic ingredients so it transcends the different languages from different countries and they are all one language so you type in that name and you should be able to find what you're looking for if not flick to the page of the substitutions and see if you can find something else brilliant um oh i had a question i've lost it where have you gone um it was from so here we are Someone on Facebook, I think in our Facebook group, because we haven't got a name, says, I am worried about the cost of the course. You do not need to worry because our masterclass is free. We have taught hundreds of thousands of people for free because we're on a mission to teach the world to formulate. And yes, we open up enrollment afterwards, but use the masterclass. We want you to formulate. We want you to make this skin cream. We want you to learn the basics. That's why we're sharing this. And believe me, I've had people tell me over the years that they got more from our free trainings than they've got from courses they've paid for elsewhere. So use it because we're going to teach you everything you need to know in order to make this. And there'll be lots of extra tips and tricks along the way. And it's going to be so much fun. So please don't worry. The masterclass is entirely free. And if you want to come and join us and our 16,000 students later, we would obviously love to welcome you. In fact, we would welcome you with open arms because we are the leading formulation school around the world. And we have a lot of fun teaching our students. And you can see all of the products stood behind me. They're all from graduates. And I only have like a tiny amount of them. I've been sent so many over the years, but there are many, many more around the world. And if you go to our website, you can see our graduate gallery, which is packed full of graduate profiles. So go and check them out and go buy from them as well, because they're amazing. And they deserve to be celebrated and supported. 
Okay, I'm going to take two more questions before we wrap this up because we've been going for an hour. The first one is from uh, Beatrice who says, if we can't attend a session, can we watch it later? Yes, you can. Do not worry. We know, I mean, we saw it at the beginning of this live, there are people watching us from literally all over the world. And if we say you must be on at this time in order to watch it, then obviously we're going to miss a lot of people. So all of our lessons, all of our episodes, because it's like a Netflix series, are pre-recorded and you can watch them in your own time. But they drop at uh, 9 a.m. Eastern time, 2 p.m. British summer time uh, every single day throughout the period that we're running the masterclass and then they'll be available for you to log in and go and watch in your study area uh let's see oh my goodness they're absolutely <laughs> flooding in i know <laughs> let's see um <laughs> like this how do you get jars that are branded with your brand is there a supplier for that well i went onto amazon and i found green jars and then i put a sticker on top so go and find something that you love i mean we're obviously you know everything about formula botanica is green and we're very proud of our brand but you can do the same and you know if you go to the beauty industry you'll see that everyone uses different colors and in fact i read an article this week about how the sort of white boxes are not that in anymore people want colorful brands so have fun with it okay one final one Doroth asks how long after the course finishes will the videos be available to watch until May 17th and then the whole thing closes down and we will hopefully do this again at another point but we don't know exactly when yet um so make the most of it 10 minutes a day Everyone has 10 minutes. I really want you to embrace this idea that you have 10 minutes to spare. Rather than watching actual Netflix, come and watch us instead, please. You will get so much out of it. Um, and then, yes, the, once we finish teaching the masterclass, there's a big webinar. So we'll be running a big free webinar with our Organic Skincare Entrepreneur Blueprint. And then after that, um, the lessons will still be available for a week. So you're going to have um yeah you're gonna have a lot of fun with it and i'm going to end with this comment from kathleen who says i am very excited about monday so am i kathleen it's gonna be awesome we're gonna have so much fun aren't we yeah definitely cool all right i think we've answered most of the question i'm sorry if i didn't get to your question we will be running live q and a's throughout the masterclass, which are like bonus sessions for you to just come and speak to our education team I think you're in one of them as well, aren't you, Brooke? I think so, yep. yep. You'll be seeing me another one. Think two of them. So <laughs> we'll be here. I mean, our education team, our tutors aren't normally available to teach, you know, for free publicly. Normally they're serving our 16,706 students and graduates, but they will be available for three bonus Q&A sessions that will run alongside the masterclass. And you can actually post up your questions beforehand so that we have them. That means if you can't join us live, we can still answer them. And our community team is all over that. Thank you so much, Brooke. That was brilliant. No problem. I hope it's been helpful to all of you and to show you all that you really don't need too much equipment to get started. This is something that you we really just want you to try it out, see if it's for you, mm -hmm. see if it's something you enjoy doing. And hopefully it is. Hopefully you catch the formulation bug too. And I hope you all enjoy the masterclass and definitely hope you all enjoy the cream because it is a fantastic cream. I've been using it on my hands and it does work very well. Yeah. So, Brilliant. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Brooke, for all of your input and for showing us your lab in a bag again. And stay tuned, everyone, for Monday when lesson one or episode one drops in your study area at 9 a.m. Eastern time, 2 p.m. British summer time. It is not live. It is pre-recorded and you can go back and watch it as many times as you want. And I've watched many people do this over the years. So have fun with it. We'll be seeing you soon. I'm sure we have a few more lives planned. I can't remember what the schedule is, but you'll be seeing me pop up and you'll get notifications about it as well. So take care. See you soon. Bye, everyone.